Hey, this is Tony Carvajal with Florida Tax Watch. Thank you so much for joining us. We're about halfway through the legislative session. They're actually in the Capitol right now having some conversations. And we thought that we'd take a moment just to, to catch up on where we are in the budget. And joining me, fortunately, is one of the state's top thinkers on the budget and our senior vice president at Florida Tax Watch, Kurt Winter. Kurt, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. My pleasure, Tony. I know that this is an exciting time. The budget uh, conversations are just kicking off. Uh, so it is about halfway point. It is exactly the time where these types of things come up. Uh, what's the status of the budget? What are you seeing? Well, we're just starting to see the beginnings of the legislature spending proposals. This week, uh, the appropriated subcommittees released their um, chair's recommendations which will now be put together and the House and the Senate will release the first draft of their um, General Appropriation Acts today. And this will be voted on in the full appropriations committees next week. Uh, some issues are already surfacing, including a uh, difference between the two chambers and school funding. And it looks like there may be some significant cuts to uh, hospitals. You know, that's actually a very interesting conversation. I'm not surprised there's, there's differences between the chambers, but I am surprised about uh, the budget conversations about how much money we have and how much money we don't have. So what's the skinny here? Are we facing a shortfall? Well, you, you still keep hearing about a more than $2 billion shortfall, but that's really not the case anymore. The money from the last federal stimulus package allowed us to avoid um, a deficit last year, and we actually carried $6 billion in unobligated revenue forward into this year. But the last estimate shows that we would still have $2 billion in cash reserves left after funding the current budget, which was passed by the last legislature. But since that federal money is one-time revenue, there is currently a $1 billion shortfall in recurring appropriations. There's plenty of uh, non-recurring revenue to fill that hole, but that doesn't bode as well for the long term. But that too could go away as the next uh, revenue estimate, which will be what the legislature bases the new budget on, is coming soon, probably in the beginning of April. We already know that in the last two months, actual revenue collections have exceeded the previous estimate by $580 million. That's money that in the bank. And it also means that we may see a large increase in the next estimate. And then there's the new federal stimulus package. That's a lot uh, to digest there. That uh, So I'm looking forward to that economic estimating um, uh, forecast that's coming out. It's just shocking to me that we have done as well as we have given the pandemic, but that really talks about the engine that is Florida but you ended on a really interesting note there, the federal stimulus package. Tell me about that federal aid. Uh, how, uh, what have you heard about how we plan to use that? Well, the state is gonna see $10 billion in direct aid from the American Rescue Plan. Local governments in Florida will get another 7 billion. And that is only the direct uh, government relief funding from what they're calling the uh, coronavirus relief fund. It goes directly to governments. But Florida schools and universities will get billions more and even more money is gonna to flow to the states, both the governments, public entities and individuals. How we're gonna use that 10 billion in direct aid is far from certain. The House and the Senate have largely direct, uh, avoided directly working that money into their early budget plans, but the House has said that it's uh, recommended school funding increase is funded entirely with expected federal funds. You know, there are restrictions in the federal law how the money can be spent, but much of it is vague and states are waiting for guidance from the US Treasury, just as we did uh, back with the CARES Act. The money can be used to respond to the health emergency or its negative economic impacts. And that includes providing assistance to individuals, businesses, organizations. It can also be used to provide premium pay to essential workers. And capital investments like investing in water, sewer, and broadband. And one difference from the CARES Act is this will allow the states to use the new money to replace lost revenue resulting from the pandemic. 
they're gauging that on the loss from uh, the first, the last full fiscal year before the pandemic hit. So if you look at that, Florida has about two billion that mm -hmm. uh, we can likely use for anything. Florida will probably get half the money in the next couple of months, but it'll likely be after the session ends. The other half could come as late as a year later. We'll see how much the legislature wants to deal with the new money, if they want to do it now or wait. The governor has kind of uh, suggested that they should <clears throat> wait, which might not be a bad idea. I hope that they don't um, try to get spend all that money immediately. Uh, we have until the end of 2024 to, to spend it. So uh, even though it's non-recurring money, we can kind of make it recurring by spreading it out a little bit. Um, the governor has offered some recommendations for the first payment. His two big recommendations are a billion dollars for his proposed uh, Resilient Florida Grant Program, which would provide grants to local governments to uh, uh, make uh, to fight flooding and to add resiliency and also to increase water quality. There's also, he wants the billion dollars to set up an emergency management response fund, which would be kind of a reserve fund to be prepared for the next emergency, which is a very good idea. He also wants to invest in transportation. Uh, he has almost a billion dollars for the transportation work program, which will help replace some of the revenue that it lost um, during the pandemic. Another 250 million to seaports and 50 million for the uh, Economic Development Transportation Fund, which actually incorporates a longtime Florida tax watch recommendation to come up with a better competitive process for selecting these uh, transportation projects, these local, uh, usually member project funds, uh, instead of just having the legislature choose from you know member requests and putting in whatever they want in the budget. So hopefully, Legislature will take up the uh, implementing language for that. They haven't shown a desire to do that yet, but uh, we're holding out hope. Governor also wants to give direct payments to uh, first responders, also fix our reemployment assistance program, and increase funding for economic development programs, such as another $50 million for Visit Florida on top of its current $50 million spending which is something Florida Tax Watch strongly supports. The legislature has hinted at some potential uses. Uh, they're talking about increasing reserves. Uh, it looks like they're moving forward with the uh, Resilient Florida program, an emergency fund. Uh, and the Senate has also mentioned things like um, in, to consider increasing Florida's very low unemployment compensation benefits. Now, I hope we mentioned the Resilient Florida plan where I think it would be a good idea to try to use federal funds for that. Uh, the House, uh, one of the subcommittees yesterday passed a bill which would fund that by uh, redirecting money that is currently going to uh, affordable housing trust fund into this new program. It would basically cost the affordable housing uh, funds about $280 million a year uh, Florida Tax Watch is opposed to that. Uh, we've called for them to quit sweeping those trust funds as there's a pretty big affordable housing crisis in Florida. This basically institutionalizes a $280 million sweep uh, from those trust funds. So we would believe that using the federal dollars would be a better approach. I think that some people would like to use some of that money to provide tax relief, although the American Rescue Plan appears to prohibit that. Yeah. Uh, it's unclear. Attorney General Moody has joined with the other AGs to object to that and, and has asked the Treasury for clarification on whether or not that can be used for tax relief or what constitutes tax relief. So that remains to be seen. But um, that's, that's what the so far, the conversation has been about using uh, this federal money. 
Kurt, there's a lot that's going into that federal money discussion and the budget discussion. Uh, it's been a busy week, as you know, here at Tax Watch. We started the week uh, moving forward on a, on a bill that uh, dealt with uh, water safety, and we're talking about e-fairness and the Wayfair decision this week, the COVID liability shield, broadband, uh, the digital divide, telehealth. We're up to our ears and issues, but that update on the, the budget and, and what's coming ahead is really important because as you can see right behind me, you know, it's starting to get close to only 35 more days to turkey season here at Florida Tax Watch. So pretty interesting conversations ahead. So let's wrap this conversation. I appreciate you getting on really quick with me on this call, but uh, what are you watching over this next week? What should we be uh, paying attention to? Well, the, the immediate uh, focus in the next week or so is going to be the new budget proposals. Uh, can't wait to see those actual PCBs and the appropriations and we want to get deeper into those. I've uh, looked through the um, the spreadsheets from the appropriation subcommittees and it appears like uh, the pandemic hasn't, um, hasn't reduced the appetite for member projects. There seems to be a lot in there, particularly this early in the process. Yeah. So we will definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, next week also could see the final passage of the longtime tax watch priority and recommendation to finally implement e-fairness to collect remote sales on uh, sales taxes on remote sales, which will shift the burden of collecting and remitting that tax from the consumer to the seller. Uh, this will has a lot of benefits for Florida, including leveling play, playing field for retailers, um, helping to avoid uh, Florida consumers from all of a sudden facing uh, tax bills and tax collection actions. Uh, another thing is it'll bring in about a billion dollars a year, an extra dollars, and that money is uh, currently planned to be used to um, to help replenish the unemployment compensation trust fund, which was decimated by the pandemic. This is also a recommendation from the Florida Tax Watch uh, COVID-19 Taxpayer Task Force. And so we're, we're glad to see that, that they're going to try to avoid what would be a huge increase on virtually all businesses in the state uh, by replenishing um, trust fund and getting it back to pre-pandemic levels. Another kind of a small issue that everybody missed in the e-fairness bill was um, they added a new proposal that is another longtime tax watch recommendation. It's a taxpayer friendly a proposal that will switch from our current, what they call the bracket system for calculating sales tax to a rounding system, which certainly is more precise in the way it should be. We've been recommending that change for many years because the current system basically overcharges uh, Florida consumers tens of millions of dollars every year. Uh, and it turns out that a lot of times it's not really 6% because of how the bracket system works. And the last thing is we're, we're holding out hope for a new seminal compact, but it looks like it may be too late in the session to get that done. So it appears the state <clears throat> will continue to miss out on hundreds of millions of dollars that it used to receive from the tribe. We're hopeful, but it's not looking good. Kurt, it's only week four, and uh, that's a mouthful already. This is when uh, things really start getting interesting in the legislative time. I just want to remind folks the, that are listening and interested in this that they can go and follow your uh, legislative updates out on our website, floridataxwatch.org, or they can uh, receive uh, emails about the budget watch, which we'll send out. Actually, if you're on the website, floridataxwatch.org, what you can also look at is all of our past research. You can find the uh, COVID uh, uh, taxpayer task force recommendations, the roadmap. You can see the economic commentary we just put out last week on Medicaid. Uh, there's uh, rich resources on all of that. Or, you know, as you can see on the screen, our emails are on here and we love hearing from our members. So if you want to be part of the conversations and make sure that we're focused on all the right things or you want to invest your time, talent or treasure in the directions that we're headed uh, for the future of Florida, that's uh, exactly what we want to hear about. Um, let me close with this. I know that we're going to get a, a chance to, uh, to get back together next week. And one of the things I'll probably be talking about next week is this data privacy bill and the economic impacts that that's going to have. But it's 
just a little early. We're doing some analysis on that. Um, I'll share some of that with you next week and all of those that are listening. But I just want to remind folks, we're only 69 days away from uh, Tax Watch's spring meeting. So hopefully we'll be meeting live in Orlando face to face and having our policy conversations and plannings for next session. Kurt, always a pleasure. I, I know it's a mouthful to cover all these uh, budget issues and next week and the week after it's going to be uh, even more interesting and complicated and uh, looking for you to make sense of it for, for me and for everybody else in Florida. So thanks for your time today. Look forward to catching up next week. Thanks, Tony. You know, I'll talk about this anytime you want. <laughs> I know you will. And that's why I enjoy our conversations. I think it's going to be a great time and um, happy spring to everybody in Florida. Enjoy the Holy Week and holidays that are coming up. And we look forward to catching up with you shortly. Thanks.